there are a few different approaches to developing and maintaining happiness. It turns out, according to the researchers, that positive relationships are the number one contributor to happiness or psychological well-being. Hi, I'm Chris Hallett. Thanks for stopping by the Cultivate Happiness channel. Today, we're going to talk about three keys to happy relationships. Ed Diener and Martin Seligman, two of the leading researchers in positive psychology, discovered that people with strong ties to friends and family and a commitment to spending time with them experience the highest levels of happiness. Now, they also discovered you don't need a ton of friends. Other studies have shown that people only need one close relationship coupled with or connected with a network of other relationships to avoid loneliness. And loneliness is one of the biggest detractors of happiness. I've looked for scientists to tell me why this is so. Why, not what. That's important. We're going to talk about the what and what to do and how to do it. But the why. Why do relationships contribute to happiness? There's really not much out there in the literature. So let me give it a step. When God created Adam, he said about Adam, it isn't good for man to be alone. You see, it's in our DNA. It's in your DNA. You are made for relationships for lasting, meaningful, life-giving connection. The Bible also says that, that we're created in the image of God. And that's a complicated subject, but part of it means that, that we're like God in many ways in our, in our being, and that God's self is a relational being. He exists in an eternal communion of loving relationships within the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so when he created humans in his image, he invites them, he invites us into that loving communion of relationships. And so we find meaning, purpose, affirmation, and love in a relationship with God. And as we receive God's love, we build a capacity to love and to be loved by others. It's a virtuous cycle. I receive love from God, I open myself up so I can love others and I'm also able to receive love from others. Why are relationships the major contributor to psychological well-being? Well, science has yet to catch up to religion on this. But to me, this seems like a reasonable answer to the question of why do positive relationships contribute to happiness? Now the what. What do I want to do or what can I do to build happy relationships? How can I improve my relationships? How can I nurture them to grow psychological well-being, to grow my own sense of happiness and the happiness of others? Well, I have three keys to share with you today. Key number one, most people spell love T-I-M-E. Time. If you really care about someone, if you want to invest in their lives, if you want them to invest in your life, it's simple. You need to spend time with them. Now, I'm thinking primarily about family and family relationships, but it's, it's broader than that. It includes other close relationships that you, in which you want to invest. Now, parents, no doubt, we spend a lot of time going to our kids' activities, going to their sports. It's important to show your concern and your support for your children in that way. But time spent watching a ball game or a performance doesn't really equate to quality time spent with your children. It's important. It's an affirming thing to do, but we want to spend time directly. If you're going to invest in the life of your children, invest in those relationships, you need to spend time directly with them. So make sure you're spending time on vacations. Great place to really spend a lot of intense time with your family and be positive and create some lasting positive memories. Playing games with them that are you know age appropriate when they're little children you play games that are age appropriate hi ho cherio things like that and as they grow older make sure that you're growing with them and you're growing your interests as they're growing interests and show interest in their interests one of the best ways to find out what your children's interests are is in conversation how about family meal time you know that's a thing that's gotten set aside as every uh, room seems to have a television and we tend to eat our meals in front of the television build some time to spend uh, time at the family table 
where you can discuss the events of the day. Put the phones up. You know, put them in a bowl or something in the middle of the table or put them over, better yet, put them in a different room so you don't hear the notifications. And just spend that time with family, building time, building relationships. These are all ways to invest in your relationships with your kids and with your spouse. Number two, second key to building strong, healthy relationships. This is going to be particularly challenging to some of the guys because I know it's challenging for me. It's talking about your feelings. You're in conversation, talk about your feelings. When you talk about your feelings, it helps relieve stress and it builds relationships. When I was uh, doing some of my training for a ministry, it was in a hospital and we had a chaplain who was uh, over charge of us. And, and he told us that as we talk to men, to be careful not use the F word. <laughs> of course, we laughed. And went, of course, we're not going to use the F word. He, he meant the other F word. The feelings were, because if you ask a man, how are you feeling, or how do you feel about this, they're probably going to shut down. So he taught us to say, well, what do you think about that? And a lot of times that's a question that will get into a man's feelings. But you want to talk about your feelings and share your feelings uh, with those who are uh, important to you, who are close to you. It draws you closer. It it builds a, a stronger connection between you and that person. And also, again, it relieves that stress of what you might be experiencing in your work life or in other areas of life where there might be anxiety or fears. And so it's good to talk about your feelings. It helps you grow your relationships, nurture your relationships, and grow closer so that those relationships, you're feeding those folks, you're feeding them, you're feeding their positive psychological well-being, their happiness, but also it's feeding your happiness. The third key, use positive words. There's a concept called the Lasado Ratio. I think I'm saying that right. It comes from a 2005 paper by Marcia Lasado, who is a professor in, of psychology in Brazil, and Barbara Fredrickson, who is at the University of Michigan. They discovered they were actually studying um, business, business relationships, uh, various businesses, and, and they recorded tons and tons of conversations in business meetings, and they came up with this Lasado ratio. And they discovered it's a ratio of positive words over negative words. So how many positive words are used versus how many negative words are used in conversation, particularly they were studying business relationships. They discovered there are three, they, or they, they categorized businesses in three categories. Flourishing businesses, those that were successful businesses, then stagnant biz, businesses that just kind of flatlined, and then failing businesses, businesses that were going to be going out of business soon. And so what they discovered, the ratio, this Lasada ratio of over 2.9 to 1, positive words to negative words, flourishing businesses, that was the ratio of positive to negative words in their conversations. Stagnant businesses were between 1 to 2.9 to 1. So 1 to 1 or, two, or all the way up to almost 3 to 1. Those businesses were stagnant. And then if they had a, a ratio below 1, those businesses were failing. Well, John Gottman, I guess he heard about this research and he decided to research marriages. And he did the same thing. He and his wife got together and they recorded, and with person's permission, obviously, uh, conversations over time. And then he developed the magic ratio, which was even greater than the Lasado ratio. And he called it the magic ratio. It's five to one. We need five positive words to every one negative word in our uh, in our relationships, in our marriages in particular. Anything lower, and according to Gottman, it predicts for divorce with 94% accuracy. So five positive words to every one negative word. Now, I'm, I'm really not sure what the status is on all this research because some of it has been heavily scrutinized in the literature. And some people have drawn uh, this, this uh, research into question, particularly, in particular, a, a student, a graduate student of psychology crunched the numbers on these studies and, and, and challenged uh, the validity of these studies. However, the basic framework makes sense, and it's probably a good guide. Do people in your life know you have positive regard for them? I mean, that's going to be a a positive, meaningful relationship, right? Well, how do they know you have positive regard for them? How do they know that you care about them? Well, one of the most important ways in showing positive regard or love is in supportive, encouraging, positive words. If those positive words are in a matrix of greater negativity, so there's more negative words than positive words, those positive words are going to get lost. The negativity is going to drown out and detract uh, from the positivity. 
So we want to be intentional about using positive words in our relationships. Now, if you're not naturally a positive person, that's another one of the important components of happiness is developing a positive, optimistic outlook on life. But even if you don't naturally fall into that category, you can change this. You can become more positive by being intentional, by thinking about the words that you're using by catching yourself when you're using negative words and putting a stop to that and intentionally using positive language in your relationships. Positive words build healthy relationships. The next key, listen. Listening is important, just as important as using positive words. When you're using positive words, you're speaking, but you need to make sure you're spending time listening, particularly empathic Listening from the word empathy, to feel with someone, to truly hear someone. Not not just their words, but what's behind their words. Uh, Now, this empathy is a positive human trait. Some people are more empathetic than others. Empathy is actually a low score for me. But that doesn't mean I just give up on empathy. Basically, it means that I have to be more aware. And again, more intentional. Because it doesn't come naturally. Listening is linked with the time aspect or the time key. It takes time to listen and to show a genuine interest in another person's experiences and opinions. So take the time. Invest in that relationship. You'll be helping them and helping yourself experience happy, flourishing lives. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. Be sure and leave a comment or if you have a question in the comment section below and subscribe to the Cultivate Happiness channel so you don't miss out on any new content that will help you lead a more fulfilling, meaningful life. I hope you have a happy day.